Today we shall be looking at hemochromatosis. Primary hemochromatosis or hereditary hemochromatosis is a genetic disorder which is characterized by excessive iron accumulation and this results in tissue damage. This develops because of a disordered iron metabolism in which there is dysregulation of intestinal iron absorption and resulting in deposition of excessive amounts of iron in the parenchymal cells which eventually cause tissue damage and impaired function in a wide range of organs. Hereditary hemochromatosis is caused by a mutant gene termed as HFE. This gene is tightly linked to the HLA A locus on a chromosome 6P. Persons who are homozygous for the mutation are at an increased risk of iron overload. And different mutations causing primary hemochromatosis occur in cases of ferroportein disease, juvenile hemochromatosis, neonatal hemochromatosis, and hypotransferinemia. HFE-related hemochromatosis is caused by an homozygous CH2Y or CH2Y H63D compound heterozygote mutation. The disorder is an autosomal recessive In the pathophysiology, body iron content generally is maintained at 3 to 4 grams such that intestinal mucosal absorption of iron is equal to iron loss. This is about 1 mg per deciliter in male and 1.5 mg in menstruating women. In hemochromatosis, mucosal absorption is greater than the body requirements and amounts up to 4 mg per deciliter are absorbed or more than that. The progressive accumulation of iron increases plasma iron and transferring saturation, resulting in a progressive increase of plasma ferritin. Since symptoms may be delayed until iron accumulation is excessive, hemochromatosis may not be recognized until total body iron is more than 10 grams or greater than that. In women, Features of hemochromatosis are uncommon before menopause because iron loss due to demences, pregnancy and childbirth tends to offset the iron accumulation. Iron overload occurs due to an increased iron absorption from the gastrointestinal tract leading to chronic deposition of this iron in the tissues. And hepcidin is a liver-derived peptide which controls basolateral iron transport in the intestines and iron release from the macrophages and other cells by binding to ferroportin. Hepcidin, in turn, responds to the signals of the liver mediated by HFE, TFR2, and hemojuvulin, preventing excessive absorption and storage. Iron deposition in the pituitary causes hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism in both men and women. This refers to hypogonadism which occurs because of less gonadotrophin hormone production. Tissue injury will result from reactive free hydroxy radicals and these radicals are generated when iron deposition in the tissue acts like a catalyst causing their formation and a disruption of iron laden lysosomes from the lipid peroxidation of subcellular organelles by excess iron. Secondary iron overload with the deposition in the parenchymal cells occurs in chronic disorders of erythropoiesis like those due to defects in hemoglobin synthesis and ineffective erythropoiesis such as sideroblastic anemia and thalassemias. In these disorders, iron absorption is increased and these patients may require blood transfusions of which they are treated inappropriately leading to iron overload. Histologically, iron is increased in many organs, particularly the liver, heart and pancreas, and to a lesser extent in the endocrine glands such as pituitary gland. And the epidermis of the skin is thin and melanin is increased in the cells of the basal layer and the dermis. 
deposits of this ion are present around the synovial lining of the joints causing arthropathy. The clinical signs of iron overload are the same regardless of the etiology and the pathophysiology of the overload. Clinical features can follow a sequence such that there is a genetic predisposition without any abnormalities and then this causes iron overload without any symptoms which develops to an iron overload with symptoms such as arthritis and fatigue and lastly leads to an iron overload with organ damage, in particular cirrhosis. Therefore, patients with significant iron overload are asymptomatic. Other symptoms which are related to organs in the largest iron deposits can also develop in these patients. Hypogonadism and erectile dysfunction in male are the initial features due to gonadal iron deposition and glucose intolerance together with diabetes mellitus is also common in these patients. Hypothyroidism can also be present in these patients. Initial symptoms are often non-specific and may include lethargy, arthralgias, change in skin color known as bronzing, loss of libido, and features of diabetes mellitus. Hepatomegaly, spinal angiomas, splenomegaly, ascites, cardiac arrhythmias, congestive heart failure, loss of body hair, and testicular atrophy together with jaundice are prominent in advanced diseases which has involved the major organs in the body. Hepatic enlargement may also exist in absence of symptoms or normal liver function tests. Liver disease is the most common complication and hepatomegaly is present which may progress to cirrhosis. In about 20-30% of these patients, they develop hepatocellular carcinoma. Cardiomyopathy with heart failure is the second most common fatal complication of hemochromatosis and hyperpigmentation known as bronzing or bronze diabetes is common and this one results from increased melanin and iron in the dermis. Diagnosis of hemochromatosis starts from a good history taking and clinical examination of the patient. During your examination, there will be a combination of hepatomegaly, skin pigmentation, diabetes mellitus, heart disease, arthritis, and hypogonadism, and this one suggests the diagnosis of hemochromatosis. There may be a specific family history and serum ferritin measurement is the simplest, most direct initial test you can conduct in these patients. This will indicate an elevated levels of more than 200 nanograms per milliliter in women or more than 300 nanograms per milliliter in men. These high levels can also result from other abnormalities, for example, inflammatory liver diseases like alcoholic liver disease and systemic inflammatory disorders, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, obesity, or hemophagocytic lymphohistocytosis. Serum iron is usually elevated of more than 300 mg per deciliter and iron binding capacity known as transfer saturation levels is usually more than 50%. Gene assay is a diagnostic of primary hemochromatosis which has been caused by the HFE gene mutations. Other types of primary hemochromatosis are suspected in instances where ferritin and iron blood tests indicate an overload whereas genetic testing is negative for the HFE gene mutation. Liver biopsy is common and is done together with hepatic iron index. High intensity magnetic resonance imaging is a non-invasive alternative for estimating hepatic iron content in these patients. And screening is required by measuring serum ferritin levels on the first relatives of the patient and testing for the 2H2Y H63D gene mutations. Treatment is indicated for patients with clinical manifestations like elevated serum ferritin levels of more than a thousand nanograms per milliliter or elevated transferrin level. Periodic clinical evaluation and measurement of serum iron, ferritin and transferrin saturation is important in these patients while initiating their treatment. 
Phlebotomy is the most effective treatment because it delays progression of fibrosis to cirrhosis, even reversing cirrhotic changes and prolonged survival. This procedure is simple to carry out, but it has one drawback in that it does not reduce the chances of developing hepatocellular carcinoma. 500 milliliters of blood, which represents 200 milligrams of iron, is removed weekly until serum iron levels are normal and transferring saturation is less than 50%. When iron levels are normal, phlebotomies can be intermittent to maintain the transferring saturation less than 30%. You have to treat diabetes, cardiomyopathy, erectile dysfunction, and other secondary manifestations accordingly. And balanced diet is not necessary to restrict consumption of iron-containing foods, for example, lead meat and liver. Moderate alcohol consumption may be required in these cases because alcohol itself increases iron absorption and in high amounts it increases the risk of cirrhosis. If possible, the patient should stop taking any alcohol. Chelating agents such as diferoxamine, when given parenterally, may remove 10 to 20 mg of iron per day as compared to the use of phlebotomy in treatment of these patients. Liver transplantation may be needed in cases where the patient has developed liver cirrhosis.